my tips for dads to be one, do it. You know, if, if you are if you are already you know on that path, if you if your missus or girlfriend's uh, pregnant, you know, do a lot of reading, but don't just read one book. You know, you see some blokes, oh, they've read one book and that's the way it's got to be done. Just take in as much information as you can from all sources, websites. There's a great website we subscribe to. Um, I think it was babycenter.com.au, you know, leading up to the birth of the kid. Here's what's going on inside the mum's tummy. Um, you know, for the first year, I think we've got weekly emails. Haven't had one for a while, I guess, when they're two, you're on your own. But just, just getting as much information as you can, read all the books, speak to other dads, uh, and then you've got to distill that down to your own version of, of being a dad. And, and I guess also with your partner, you know, who's in charge of what. I mean, occasionally Bill will misbehave and... Although there's no physical threat, it'll be, I'll come in and say, mate, if you do that again, I'm going to take away the space shuttle and there's going to be no more bot-bot and you've got to go and sleep in your own bed. I'm going to be very unhappy unless you say, sorry, mummy. And he'll go, at first he used to smile and laugh and be like, no, mate, it's not funny. I'm deadly serious. You say sorry to mummy or the space shuttle's gone. We're not going to the beach. And he'll say, sorry, mummy, sorry, mummy. So, and say sorry, Daddy, as well, because I was out there working and I've had to come in. Sorry, Daddy. Um, so it's, you know, you, you've, got a, you've got a job as, as a dad. You've got to be harsh. Um, we don't actually have a no-smacking policy, um, but we, I, I just, you know, I think if you can get away without it, I think the threat of a space shuttle being <laughs> removed is, uh, is more threatening than, than a smack anyway. Um, I mean, for us, physicality is tackling. It's fun. Um, not that smacking's fun, but you know, I, I just don't think you need that that physical threat. I think you can you can get by with you know, threat of removing privilege, um, threat of um, I guess withdrawing fun from that moment. Yeah, look, I guess the I mean, overall, the the male uh, role and it's probably about to come across as sexist or chauvinistic or something, but. Um, you know, men, men have a physicality that, that um, w women don't. And I guess, you know, millenniums ago, um, blokes did go out and literally hunt and, and kill big animals and bring them home. And the women went and collected the, the berries and, and the vegetables and that evolved into, you know, farming and they, they plant. And, uh, and in, in our family, I mean, I, I work uh, five days a week and Bill's mum works two days a week. But I guess my caveman thing is to go out and, um, apart from our trip to the butcher shop where I do literally bring home the meat, uh, is to go out and, and, and make money for the family. Um, now, I don't think there's anything wrong with the women, woman being the main, main um, breadwinner either, but in, in our family it's just this, the way it works. Uh, and um, Bill's mum does not eat red meat and doesn't particularly like going to the butcher shop, but Bill and I love going to the butcher shop, bringing home the big slab of meat and getting some biltong or some turkey breast to eat while we're up there. And uh, yeah, so I mean, literally and metaphorically, I think it's, it's usually the man's job to bring home the meat. Uh, 